Okay, remember that they're changing my voice? I'm not gay. I don't naturally sound gay. And I've come to the unavoidable conclusion that whites, Jews, and LGBT people um, should not be presenting the Bible as speakers. Okay? The reason why is because they have come together as groups to change my voice, to make it so I sound like them, to insist that people read the scripture in a way that is similar to them so they can pretend they're superior so they can pretend that their cultures are magically superior what have you and i'm sure we can all agree that that must come with punishment and since white jews and lgbt people haven't done enough they haven't loved god enough to scramble to correct that 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 must be the case now are people going to listen to me no because they're rebels right there's people that are raping kids in their churches they're ripping them off they're hoarding all kinds of money while people starve to death mormons catholics you name it they have billions of dollars while people starve to death all over the world okay do you think you, you think they know that what they're doing is evil they must know it so do i think they're going to pay attention to this no but it has to be said okay when people ignore the verdicts from god there's eternal punishment and they're they're you know, what they're doing is pitiful. What they're doing is worse than arguing that, you know, slavery and, and the Native American genocide is ma was magically in the white man's and Jews and LGBT community's best interest. It utterly, utterly disgraced them. And it was a mark on their, their group's spirits. Okay. Well, that's why I posted that last video anyway, even though, you know, like a lot of videos that try to make it so I sound gay have gay speech patterns they use various technologies and fumes and poisons to do that there's a lot of stuff in my throat right now in my mouth what have you and even though when i had to switch over to the phone okay that it sounded very weird and kind of almost comic right but it's a disgrace for them that's a blow to the heart of their offspring to their spirits it doesn't matter how gay you are how atheistic you are how tough you think you are how much of a co corporate control freak what they did was an extreme blow to themselves and their families and their offspring and if anyone disagrees i command you in the name of god to put in the comments okay because there is no viable counter argument what they did disgraced them their groups their races their religions their social clubs their marriages, their offspring to the extreme with no way back. They can just do deeds that kind of are a little helpful, but that kind of disgrace, they're done. They're done. So we get to, you know, we're on Proverbs 18, verse 7. The mouths of fools are, are their undoing and their lips are a snare to their very lives and their offspring, right? Because, you know, if you have AIDS for something, you have a kid, you're, the kid's going to have AIDS. You have something far worse than that, generational ill-gotten gains, and you bring a kid into the world, it, they, it, it, it goes to that kid too. Every cell in their body is connected to your generational ill-gotten gains. What food you ate, what, what drugs were in the system, when you impregnated the person, you name it. But it has to do with those spiritual ill-gotten gains from oppressing everybody, from lever leveraging privilege and being too fragile to man up and do what's right, to, to being too much of a pussy to admit what's, that you did wrong, but instead you deny it. All that guilt, all that generational ill-gotten gains, all that filthy, filthy, disgusting spirit goes on to them as well. And you have no valid redeemer after my flesh dies. And what's worse, you mocked me and persecuted me while I was here. My goodness, how dumb could you people be, right? So the mouths of fools are their undoing and their lips are snared to the very lives. The words of a gossip are like choice mortals, excuse me, morsels. They go down to their inmost parts. So their, their actions go down to their souls and where their souls produce their offspring's souls and their offspring's flesh. It goes down to their inmost parts. One who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. That's why I was right to say that people should not be reading it in their spirits, their races, and, 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 and you know, token minorities, white Jews, LGBT, they should not be presenting the Bible. But no one should be after I'm gone, but especially not them, because they persecuted me, they changed my voice, and one who's slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. So the masses of people from their groups who they're trying to benefit by sabotaging me, okay, were slack in their work. So they're brother to the destroyers, okay? And if they didn't know what's going on, okay? If a bunch of pussies wouldn't man up for the life of them, Whose, whose actions reflect that they're a bitch, didn't know what's going on, okay? Does that mean magically they get a pass? No. If people whose families bred away from the divine order till they didn't know what's going on, do magically they get a pass? No. 
The wealth of the rich is their fortified city and they imagine it a wall too high to scale. Stupid as hell, right? Before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. Okay? To not listen. And to not answer if you disagree is folly and shame. Just like to answer before listening is folly and shame. I've listened to people. I've studied them carefully for years and years and years. I've demanded they present an argument. They were slack in their work. My verdicts are sound. The human spirit can endure in sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear? Who can bear what you're, you're sending your offspring? The shame you put on your families and yourselves when you meet your maker. The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge for the ears of the wise seek it out. And notice they're fuming me, right? Even now, they're still fuming me because it's so important to them to mock God and to disgrace themselves and to strike themselves in the heart and soul into the airy essence of themselves and their offspring, to play word clay games, to play brain hack games, that they're still doing it. The collective spirit of the governing class of the white race and the Jews and the LGBT, which is the heart of their groups and their souls and their spirits, the people they follow unconditionally are far too stupid to stop acting like bitches and to stop mocking Christ. If you're white Jew and LGBT, scramble to obey God through me. Fashion everyone else should. Do not be part of the governing class groupings that you're following. Do not be part of the groupings and the formations that you're making. You're not doing yourselves any favors by accepting the blood money privilege that comes with persecuting Christ to his death that the governing class has you being complicit with. I made it harder for me to speak, but I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. If you don't, put it in the comments. In a lawsuit, the first to speak seems right until someone comes forward and cross-examines. But if people don't come forward and cross-examines, that person's right, that's all there is to it. If it's on a divine issue, like it says in the Bible, judge for yourselves what is right. You didn't judge for yourselves what is right here, and you did me wrong. It says, settle the matter with your adversary before he takes you to court, to divine court. You didn't do that. Part of the reason you didn't do that because you have no case and you've chosen in your hearts and your souls to go to hell with your offspring. Casting the lot settles disputes and keeps strong opponents, opponents apart. That one's a bit too confusing for you people, so I would just throw it out. Because casting the lot, in a sense, is gambling and it confuses the issue. No, you're not supposed to roll the dice over what you should do. Okay? A brother wronged is more unyielding than a fortified city. Disputes are like the barred gates of a citadel. Doing the Son of God wrong makes it so he's more unyielding than a fortified city. And disputes are like the barred gates of a citadel. Going back to verse 1, which connects to this, like a jigsaw puzzle. An unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. You started a quarrel with me, you did me wrong, and I'm not going to budge for you or your offspring, you stupid fucks. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled with the hardest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Your fruit is fucking persecuting Christ. And those who don't know, you were slacking your work because you were following those who are persecuting Christ like bitches he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord you don't have wives you have rebels a true wife is someone who obeys God through me the poor plead for mercy but the rich answer harshly you know and then they're females obviously and so on and so forth so the poor were pleading for your mercy all you rich people who ignore my war on poverty plan and you answered by no you're not going to do it even when Christ commands you to on behalf of God with God's 100% approval what the fuck do you think happens to you and your offspring's souls now? You'll think you'll be elevated to the highest fucking heavens? It'll be more bearable for Capernaum and Sodom and Gomorrah than for you fucking rebels. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. One who follows devils comes to ruin. One who makes formations with people who mock me and cheat me comes to ruin. One who makes formations with chicken head bitches that will reject the son of God for some bitch ass rich ass pussy comes to fucking ruin.